What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a very exciting Liverpool transfer news video because Liverpool have 150 million pounds to spend at least on the summer transfers incoming which is very very exciting news Max Bradfield and James Pierce and various other journalists and news outlets are reporting that Liverpool are ready to match last year's spending as both ends of the pitch require new arrivals so we will take a look at the in this video at what kind of transfers Liverpool are planning to do what kind of players we are targeting and who Liverpool are looking to sell or move on and we also have a big wage budget that we can spend after Thiago and Matip left Liverpool that's 400,000 pounds per week in wages that was freed up and Liverpool are looking at young talent for the long-term success so we are looking to sign a young uh, winger Johan Bakayoko and even Federico Chiesa who's not yet young they are on the radar defensive targets include Antonio Silva, Gonzalo Inacio, Piero Incapi and Lenny Euro so the loads of brilliant centre the bags that Liverpool are looking at so if you enjoy these uh, transfer news updates make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new around here so you never miss the latest updates around Liverpool FC and Dean Jones also transfer expert is reporting that incoming transfers will primarily focus on defense and attack as areas to strengthen so maybe not midfield because we have a lot of midfielders and Trenox Arnold also could come into the midfield but we made a video about that in detail and Liverpool are looking at a center back after Joao Matip left because we signed Mekarister, Soboslai, Endo and Gravenberg so the midfield got a big refresh now it's time for the defense to get refreshed and the attack as well Liverpool are looking at Johan Bakayoko who is just 21 years old he had a brilliant couple of seasons at PSV Eindhoven got 12 goals and 9 assists in 33 games Dean Jones also noted that Federico Chiesa is worth keeping an eye on because he only has one year left on his contract and the renewal contract renewal talks at Juventus are not progressing very well with his agent Ramadani and Chiesa in negotiations with Juventus but Chiesa could leave Juventus for as low a fee as 21 million pounds I think for that amount it's worth taking on a risk on Chiesa after got a few serious injuries he wasn't as prolific as before at Juventus but he's still a really good player and Liverpool also have a big decision to make in the forward areas do we sell either Mo Salah or Luis Diaz who are both attracting interest Mo Salah from Saudi Arabia and Luis Diaz from Saudi Arabia but also from Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain and here are the stats of Chiesa and Bakayoko as I said Chiesa is less prolific and he's a, a lot older as well so I would go for Bakayoko if I was Liverpool Chiesa scored nine goals and two, two assists uh, but of course Chiesa plays in a much stronger league in the Serie A so Bakayoko's numbers are better and he's younger but he's playing in an inferior league according to Dean Jones Liverpool have kept close tabs on the Portuguese centre-backs Antonio Silva and Gonzalo Inacio, they are playing for Benfica and Sporting respectively Piero Hincapi uh, also crowned champion unbeaten champion at Leverkusen and they won the German Cup as well Lenny Euro of Lille a lot of clubs are interested in him he's 18 years old and he's a big talent so even for 50 million Lenny Euro would not be too expensive because he's the next great centre-back talent coming through from the France from the French league but the Lenny Euro's price will be driven up by clubs uh, like Manchester United Real Madrid who are interested in him Lenny Euro kept 15 clean sheets in 29 uh, sorry 30 two matches in the French league this season which is really really impressive for an 18 year old and what is really really encouraging is that James Pierce is reporting that Liverpool do not work on a strict budget but they of course try to get value for money best deals possible and they are aiming to live within their means and each deal is assessed in a, on a case-to-case -case basis and Liverpool will not pay over the odds for a player the return of the Champions League and eight group stage games will guarantee Liverpool a very very healthy revenue and that will be a welcome boost to their finances and also Liverpool have shown last summer 
if the right player is available, we are not shy to make huge record-breaking transfer bids. Liverpool bid 115 million for Moises Caicedo and they are prepared to spend big money on a player if they feel that that player can have a significant impact on Liverpool's squad. Like Virgil van Dijk and Alisson, they were two like record-breaking signings. Van Dijk cost uh, like 75 million. Alisson was the most expensive goalkeeper at the time, 60 something million. And Liverpool are in no danger of breaching the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules because in the last three seasons that they are looking at, Liverpool have recorded a combined pre-tax loss of just 6.3 million pounds and the permittable loss is 105 million pounds and both Everton and Nottingham Forest went above that so Liverpool are in a very healthy position in theory we can we can spend 100 million more than we generate and we will we would still be within or close to within uh, the rules of the profit and sustainability threshold. Liverpool still have a lot of strong options at the centre-back, Virgil van Dijk, Konate, Joe Gomez, Kwanzaa, but Matip leaving and the fact that Joe Gomez will deputise for Conor Bradley if Trent Arsenal slots into the midfield and Joe Gomez can deputise for the left-back as well and Konate is injury-prone, Kwanzaa is just 21 years old. So we really have one rock-solid reliable center back in Virgil van Dijk. Gomez and Konate had many injury problems so it is expected that both Gomez and Konate could be out at the same time with injuries because that happened many times before. So Liverpool are definitely looking at signing a new center back. Van Dijk's future remains unresolved but because he's pretty uh, a lot older than Trent Alexander, Liverpool can wait until uh, you know maybe December to actually tie Virgil van Dijk down to a new contract we can see how he performs in the first half of the season. Konate's form also dropped off dramatically at the tail end of the season like many other players form as well and Kwanzaa actually started ahead of Konate. David Ornstein also reported that Liverpool are open to bringing in an attacker in this summer transfer window. Wingers are absolutely crucial to Arne Slot's style of play with uh, Arne Slot favoring progressive direct wingers who are strong on one-on-one. Arne Slot uh, former player Minta who is uh, I think at Newcastle and he was on loan at Feyenoord last season he's being linked with Liverpool I might make a whole separate video on him Thiago's departure also leaves the Liverpool a little bit short in the midfield department even though we have a lot of players there the defensive midfield area is a cause for concern if Arneslot plays the 4-2-3-1 formation and Liverpool only have Bajcetic and Endo two out and out defensive midfielders if Trent Alexander-Arnold is converted into a defensive midfielder he can play there of course as well as a deep lying playmaker he has brilliant passing range but still that's three players for two positions so Liverpool are thinking about uh, maybe bringing in a defensive midfielder as well Adrian's future remains unclear and I don't understand why Liverpool offered him a new contract because he's 37 years old he's like third choice goalkeeper yes he's experienced but he ties up a non-homegrown slot in Liverpool's squad so we only have two non-homegrown players that we can sign so basically two players who are f not from England or not from the UK Liverpool have huge contract decisions to make on Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk and Mo Salah they are all entering the fi final year of their contracts with different dynamics in play for each uh, those uh, decisions are absolutely huge and the FSG decided to restructure their football operations with uh, Michael Edwards replacing Mike Gordon as the key day-to-day -day decision maker on football matters at Liverpool Richard Hughes was uh, of course appointed as sporting director Pedro Ma Marquez joined as uh, FSG's director of football development he will oversee the development of young players and Anna Slot will have input in identifying and selecting transfer targets and R Richard Hughes will then lead negotiations for signings so but ultimately Arne Slot will just okay the signings, uh, he will not necessarily pick which players Liverpool are going to sign but he will be of course um, discussion, in discussion with the Liverpool hierarchy 
every signing will be okayed by on a slot basically. Liverpool had a very quiet transfer window so far, but that's because Arne Slot hasn't even been officially interviewed yet because a lot of uh, players are on international duty and Arne Slot, of course, uh, is on holiday as well. So the plan was always to give Ar Arne Slot a first official interview, like maybe one week before preseason starts when uh, more of uh, the Liverpool players are actually at the AXA, AXA training center. And honestly, it's unlikely that he will take a lot of decisions before actually taking a closer look at the squad. The Euros and the Copa America mean a lot of senior players at Liverpool will be absent in the early parts of preseason. But honestly, we'll have an opportunity to assess the likes of the youth career players Bobby Clark, Jaden Dance, James McConnor, returning loanees like Fabio Carvalho, Tyler Morton, Owen Beck, Luke Chambers, Seb van den Berg, even though Liverpool are uh, looking at uh, selling Sepp van den Berg as well because uh, negotiations between Liverpool and Mainz about a permanent deal have started for Sepp van den Berg. So Mainz of course want to keep Sepp van den Berg who spent last season on loan at Mainz and they managed to survive the relegation better. They stayed in the Bundesliga. But if Liverpool want 20 million, I don't think Mainz are going to pay that. But pretty much a close amount to that will be paid by Mainz. So we will see how that shakes out. Liverpool are also maybe looking to sell Kevin Kelleher, who said that he's looking to move on this summer because he has really got the appetite for first team football after playing 26 times for Liverpool this season. Alisson, in comparison, played 32 games this season. So Kelleher, of course, wants to be a number one goalkeeper at the Premier League club. So Kelleher could be moved on, that could be another 15-20 million into the Liverpool transfer budget. Left back Tsimikas is another who has fallen down the packing order, although he signed a new long-term contract last season. So I don't think Liverpool are looking to sell Tsimikas, I think he's a good backup for Andy Robertson and we have Joe Gomez who can play left back as well. So I think in the full back areas we have like four or five players depending on uh, if uh, Trent Alexander plays full back or defensive midfield. My main priority would be to sign a centre back and an absolutely brilliant defensive midfielder. And if we have a money left over, I would maybe sign a winger a striker as well. But I expect Arne Slot to unlock Darwin Nunez. Looking at this graphic, it's absolutely crazy that Darwin Nunez is 10 game rolling average on non penalty goals scored and the red is whether when Darwin Nunez is below his expected goals and uh, the blue is when he's above his expected goals. So as you can see this is the uh, two seasons of Darwin Nunez's Liverpool career that you are looking at in this graphic. Credit to the Athletic for this graphic and in like 90% of the time Darwin Nunez is below his expected goals average. So once he starts scoring more of his expected chances, and by the way, Darwin Nunez for Uruguay, scoring eight goals in five games. Maybe there is less pressure on him for the national team. I don't know what it is. And Darwin, it's more than just being unlucky. Darwin Nunez is too hot-headed, too emotional in front of goal, playing for Liverpool. Maybe he wants it too hard. Maybe he's a little bit too desperate. But if he can calm himself down and work on his finishing, he could really explode into a 25-30 goal a season striker. But I think time is running out for Darwin Nunez. He, ge he gets one more season if he performs again way below his expected goals numbers for another season. Liverpool might need to look at another number nine another striker that's my opinion let me know what is yours in the comments below and thanks for watching guys i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video have a nice day see you later goodbye